The historical relationship between the Canadian government and Indigenous peoples is complex. This complicated relationship extends to the way that many Indigenous people view the healthcare system. Alberta Health Services is committed to move towards reconciliation and to help to improve the healthcare experiences for Indigenous patients, families, clients, and communities accessing healthcare in Alberta. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada was established with the purpose of documenting the history and lasting impacts of the Canadian Indian residential school system on Indigenous students and their families. It provided residential school survivors an opportunity to share their experiences. In 2015, the final Truth and Reconciliation Report was submitted. This report included 94 recommendations or calls to action. Seven of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action are health-related. Alberta Health Services supports the commitment to meeting the following recommendations along with the provincial and federal governments. These calls to action are Number 18. Acknowledgement. Recognize and implement health care rights. Number 19. Establish measurable goals and surveillance of health indicators, close gaps in health outcomes. Number 20. Address distinct health needs of Métis, Inuit, and off reserve First Nation people. Number 21. Provide sustainable funding for existing and new healing centers. Number 22. Incorporate traditional healing practices administered by Indigenous healers and elders. Number 23. Increase Indigenous representation in the healthcare field. Ensure retention. Provide cultural competency training. Number 24. Medical and nursing schools in Canada are to offer mandatory courses dealing with Indigenous health issues. Where did these recommendations come from and why are they important to our work? For over 150 years, residential schools operated in Canada. Administered by the Roman Catholic, Anglican, United and Presbyterian churches, these schools were intended to indoctrinate Indigenous peoples into colonial ways of being and Christian belief systems. The overarching goal was to assimilate the Indigenous peoples into mainstream Canadian society. These objectives were based on the assumption that Indigenous cultures and spiritual beliefs were inferior. Removing Indigenous children from their homes and isolating them from their culture allowed the Canadian government to enforce Prime Minister Sir John A. Macdonald's directive to kill the Indian in the child. Children were physically taken from their families and communities as young as five years old. When they arrived at the schools, the children were bathed in disinfectant, deloused, and had their hair cut short. To reinforce the intention of assimilation, children were reassigned with numbers and had their traditional given names changed to English names. They were forbidden from speaking their own languages and denied contact with their siblings and family members. The mistreatment of students in residential schools has contributed to the many health disparities experienced by Indigenous peoples today. Often, these schools were many miles away from their home communities. These schools were underfunded, overcrowded, and were used as a tool for the assimilation of Indigenous people. Thousands of students suffered physical, psychological, emotional, and sexual abuse. All suffered from cultural displacement loneliness, and a longing to be home with their families. Many children never returned home. The damage inflicted by these schools continues to this day through intergenerational trauma. Intergenerational trauma is the transmission of historical oppression and its negative consequences across generations. There is evidence of the impact of intergenerational trauma on the health and well-being of Indigenous people and on the social disparities faced by Aboriginal people in Canada and other countries. In 2009, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada began a six-year process to support survivors, communities and families affected by the residential school system. 6,750 stories were shared by survivors through numerous community engagements across the country. 
These stories inform the 94 recommendations laid out by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Senator Murray Sinclair will now speak to the ways in which Canada can improve its relationship with Indigenous peoples through reconciliation. Hello everybody, I'm Murray Sinclair. I'm the chair of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada. I want to talk to you for a few minutes about the issue of reconciliation, something which of course is very important to us here at the Commission, but also is of interest and importance to a lot of people in Canada. One of the things that we at the Commission have discovered is that it took us a long time to get to this point in terms of the relationship between Aboriginal people in this country. Seven generations of children went through the residential schools. And each of those children who were educated were told that their lives were not as good as the lives of the non-Aboriginal people of this country. They were told that their languages, their cultures were irrelevant. They were told that their people and their ancestors were heathens and pagans and uncivilized and needed to give up that way of life to come to a different way of living. At the same time that that was going on, non-Aboriginal children in the non-Aboriginal school systems of this country were also being told the same thing about Aboriginal people. So as a result, many generations of children, including you and your parents, have been raised to think about things in, the, in a different way, in the wrong way, in a way that is negative when it comes to Aboriginal people. And we need to change that. It was the educational system that has contributed to this problem in this country. And it's the educational system we believe that's going to help us to get away from this. We need to look at the way that we educate children. We need to look at the way that we educate ourselves. We need to look at what it is that our textbooks say about Aboriginal people. We need to look at what it is that Aboriginal people themselves are allowed to say within the educational system about their own histories. In addition to that, we also believe that What's important when it comes to looking at the way that children are educated is to understand that because it took us so many generations to get to this point, it's going to take us at least a few generations to be able to say that we are making progress. We cannot look for quick and easy solutions because there are none. We need to be able to look at this from the perspective of where do we want to be in three or four or five or seven generations from now? when we talk about the relationship between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people in this country. And if we can agree on what that relationship needs to look like in the future, then what we need to think about is what can we do today that will contribute to that objective. Reconciliation will be about ensuring that everything that we do today is aimed at that high standard of restoring that balance to that relationship. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau promised to implement all 94 calls to action and to design a national engagement strategy for developing and implementing a national reconciliation framework. Alberta Health Services, as a learning organization, is moving forward and addressing these calls to action. Indigenous cultural competency education is now required for all Alberta Health Services staff. Indigenous awareness and sensitivity e-learning courses in-person workshops, Indigenous health telehealth learning series sessions, and Kairos blanket exercises are available to support healthcare professionals in their personal and professional development. The Indigenous Health Program provides Indigenous hospital liaisons and cultural helpers to promote the health and well-being of Indigenous patients and families. Alberta Health Services has two dedicated Indigenous health clinics, Elbow River Healing Lodge in Calgary, and the Indigenous Wellness Clinic in Edmonton. Alberta Health Services has also developed strategies to support, recruit, and retain its Indigenous workforce. It's time for targeted change within Alberta Health Services, for active engagement in the reconciliation process through understanding of Indigenous history and culture, in order to fully embrace and accommodate diversity and inclusiveness within the organization.